Colonel Lauren LeVar Johnson was born in Woodruff, Utah on January 23, 1917. After graduating from Payson High School in 1936, he served in the National Guard and then joined the U.S. Army Air Corps. Johnson graduated from flight school in June 1940 and soon distinguished himself as a wartime legend. A member of the renowned 19th Bomb Group, the dashing young pilot was part of the United States' first mass ramp-up of land-based aircraft across the Pacific Ocean, flying equipment and supplies from San Francisco, California to Clark Air Base in the Philippines. Johnson soon returned to the U.S. on assignment to train two heavy bomb groups. Upon completion of the task, he was deployed to the European Theater, where he served as commander of the 392nd Heavy Bombardment Group in the 8th Air Force. Holding the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, Johnson could have directed his troops primarily from the ground. Choosing instead to lead by example, Johnson flew a B-24 Liberator alongside his men into some of World War II's most dangerous battles. From 1944 to 1945, he personally flew 37 combat missions, including the first daylight raid on Bremen. His unit went on to earn one of the war's most enviable records. On February 24, 1944, the 392nd attacked a German aircraft and components factory at Gotha. The raid was part of Big Week during Operation Argument, where a combined effort of the Royal Air Force and the United States Army Air Forces made sustained attacks against Axis aircraft production, while at the same time luring German Luftwaffe fighters into fierce combat. Under Johnson's command, the 392nd hit its mark on the Gotha factory with 98% accuracy, dropping its bombs within 2,000 feet of the aiming point. Lieutenant Colonel Myron Kielman flew as Johnson's deputy lead. Well, the weather was very clear as we turned to the target. Red flares from the lead ship signaled bomb bay doors open, a fast and anxious cross-check and a recheck of compass heading and reference points assured command pilot Lauren Johnson that the target was dead ahead. The bombs were smack on target, but the battle wasn't over. No sooner had the wing left the target's flak than we were accosted by German fighters again. Strung out in trail and with some planes slowed down from flak damage, our three squadrons became vulnerable to vicious attacks. For the next hour and more, Messerschmitt, Falke Wolf, and Junker fighters worked us over until our fighters could fend them off. The destruction of Gotha was a serious blow to the German Air Force. In fact, intelligence described the raid as the most valuable single target in the enemy twin-engine fighter complex. But it came at a price. When the group returned seven hours after takeoff, seven planes had been lost and 13 were badly damaged. The 392nd sustained 122 casualties in the bloody battle, but the unit destroyed 16 enemy fighters and was awarded a distinguished unit citation for its efforts. After its work in mainland Europe, the 392nd bomb group supported the airborne invasion of Holland and the assault made by Allied paratroops across the Rhine. The group completed a total of 285 missions, the last one on VE Day. Following World War II, Colonel Johnson served for two years as commander of Mather Field in Sacramento, California. He also held command posts at Victorville and Bakersfield, California. After graduating from Brigham Young University in 1947, he spent two years at the Pentagon before being transferred to Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1949. When the United States entered the Korean War in June 1950, Colonel Johnson answered the call to serve. He was killed in action on November 30, 1950, during the crash of a C-45 en route from Albuquerque to Hill Air Force Base in Ogden, Utah. Planes engaged in a search for the wreckage made 193 flights, totaling 343 hours to retrieve both his body and that of an accompanying staff sergeant from Oklahoma, Billy Nash. Just 33 years old, Johnson left behind a wife and four children and was buried in the Payson, Utah Cemetery. Throughout his military career, Colonel Lauren LeVar Johnson earned the Silver Star, the Distinguished Flying Cross, and a Purple Heart. He was also awarded the Air Medal, the French Croix de Guerre, and the Soldier's Medal, being honored for conspicuous gallantry in action against the enemy and heroism at the risk of life. 
While he ultimately lost his life in service to his country, Colonel Johnson's legacy in Utah aviation lives on.